morning church and a happy, happy, happy Mother's Day. Gentlemen, if you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind standing with me and just giving a hand clap for our mothers. Mother's Day poem to read. It's titled Mother's Day Love. Actually, I asked my wife if she would uh, have me read it to her. She said, no. <laughs> I'll hear it at church. So, here it is. <laughs> this is the day that we celebrate our mom. But why should we wait for this day to come? Mom never picks a day to love and celebrate us. So let's change that. It's a must. There are some people that feel saying, Mom, I love you, is wrong. Let's give that thinking a brand new song. Yeah. Then if Mom is gone and you have regrets, you will feel so bad that you didn't take those steps. I'm guilty of that very thing. That is probably why I had this message to bring. Please, let me be perfectly clear. Show Mom your love and please be sincere. Moms can be considered the most important person in our lives, not disrespecting in any way our wives. We recognize our wives' situation, however, this is coming from a mother-child connotation. There are moms out there that don't have children, but they love all, just as if they were them. We know there's a special kind of love when it comes to mother's love. It rivals that love that comes from above. Now, of course, that's not an accurate testament. I'm simply trying to drive home my previous sentiment. It's amazing how moms will do whatever for the family, that in fact, they can cause men to do what's manly. Mothers, you are so miraculous, carrying those babies nine months so meticulous. Men, we, are, we participate, but we don't always carry our weight. Speaking for myself. There's a special mom in my life that reminds me of my biological mom. And I tell her how much I love her, and I feel like her son. I wish I had told my mom how much I loved her while she was here on earth. That wonderful woman of whom gave me birth. Mom is gone and cannot hear, but I will surely tell her when God calls me to appear. To young moms thinking of old age and how to be wiser, we have a lady in our midst by the name of Aunt Liza. The amazing woman is over a century. To be precise, she's 103. To all you wonderful moms this day, God has something he wants me to convey. He loves you. Keep the faith. Job well done. Signed by the holiest one. Happy Mother's Day. May God so richly bless you. And thank you for being who you are. write poetry and I'm just in awe of what I heard today. Humble. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well he's paid a tribute to mothers but today we want to honor moms with a, a flower and so the men are going to be coming out and giving all the ladies a, a carnage, carnage today or a carnation I should say. And we just want to say thank you to the men this, this is one time where they get to serve us. Hello. We just thank God for it. We thank God for the men in the house, right? I'm telling you. It, but guess what? Mama didn't do this thing on her own. Hello, somebody. <laughs> it takes two to make a thing go right. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you to our men who are so gracious today, to, to, and uh, Sister Althea who was involved, thank you so much also. I have to tell you, you know, these things don't happen on their own. 
You need to know, church, behind the scenes, there are folks working to do what they do, to make Sunday service every Sunday. I mean, there's amazing people in this congregation. I said yesterday, I ran into Pastor Lenny, he said, how are things going at East Press? And I said, well, I'm falling in love with the people. What can I tell you? I love the people. I want you to know that. Like, I absolutely love being here. It's been wonderful to meet so many different people, and I just thank God. Uh, to be here in East Preston for a time such as this. God is truly, truly amazing. You know, there's many of you who are here today, and as uh, Brother Graham said, you know, his mom is no longer with him. And for those of you who have lost your mom, I know that I have lost mine also. You know, we just pray that God will comfort your hearts today. Some of you might have just recently lost your mom. So lean into the one who is able to comfort and to keep you in your time of sorrow. <laughs> Today we have a, our speaker, Tammy Huey. Come on, give it up for Tammy today. I know it's going to be a good word. I looked and said, you look good. Hello? Check her out today. Her husband told her you look good. I said, all right now. So we're just grateful to have you today to uh, bring the word of God. And now we're going to move along in our, our program. We have a couple of ladies who are going to do tributes for us this morning. But before we do that, I'm going to call on Sister Mariah to bless our offering and share with you our announcements. Please make sure you're looking at the emails when they come out about all the announcements and all the activities. There's lots of things going on, and I don't want you to miss out on any of them. Thank you, Sister. Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Can we stand for the octary prayer, please? Three. And let us pray. Dear God, I just want to thank you for providing for us. Thank you for waking us up each and every day and giving us a job to go to. Thank you for giving us the, the funds so we can give back a portion of what you have given to us. Dear God, I ask you to bless this offering. May it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. I pray that you bless each and every one that has given. Bless those who were unable to give, for you know the reasons why. All these favors I ask in your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, so the highlights for this week. Today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the women. Our Bible study series, The Bait of Satan, continues Wednesdays at 7 p.m. UBC, our numbers are growing. Spread the word and come on over. You will be blessed. Grief Share. Um, our grief support group happens Monday at 7 p.m. in the W5 Mall, 1900 Highway 7. It's week 501 uh, in the Family Resource Center. So please come on out on Monday evenings for that. On Saturday, May 21st from 10 to 12 is our church business meeting. Sunday, June 19th is Father's Day. Our speaker will be Brother Darren Tolliver. And Sunday, June 26th is our graduation service. Our speaker will be EP, EBC's licentiate Darren Davis. Them right from wrong. I try to teach them the way my mother taught me. 
my mother brought us up very well. Um, it's been 10 months that we lost our mom and I miss her so, 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 so much. Um, we were kind of kids that see mommy every day. And people would say, why do you guys go to your mother's house every day? Well, this is the reason why I went to my mother's house every day, because now I don't see her, and I miss her very much. And today I wear this suit because it's mommy. Oh. On Mother's Day, it's her tribute to her. Thank you. I'm praising on for waking all of us up this morning to see this new day. Then I want to give honor to my wonderful mother that brought up our sisters and brothers. She always taught us to have manners and respect. She said, manners and respect will tell you anywhere. You can have all the money in the world. And if you got no manners, respect, no one don't want to see you. So I thank her for that. And then I also want to thank God for, you know when you're in having these babies and you're in so much pain and you're praying, God, please let this thing get over quickly. <laughs> but then, when they lay that beautiful person in your arms, the love, there's no other love like it in the world. You love that child so, and then thank God he blessed me with six beautiful children. I lost my son. And when he went back, my heart went with him. I thank God for my daughters. I thank the Lord so much for my daughters that he let me here. They are just so wonderful to me. They are my nurse when I'm sick. And I'm thankful to that. And if they do something that's not right, they do call and I apologize. And you worry about them too. Every day. And I called her Friday and she didn't call. I called her yesterday and she didn't call. I called her Shawnee and he said, Nanny's still laying down, she's sick. I called her Shawnee about four times knowing. I said to Sean, go upstairs with your phone, open the door and easy, see if your grandmother's still breathing and call me back. I went to the door and he said, Nanny, she's all right. And you know, when they're growing up and they fall down, Skins on skin and knees and arms and things. Thank God for the band aid. <laughs> the band aid worked wonders. It doesn't matter. Even to this day, if a child falls down and hurts herself and you put a band aid on, it's just like a miracle. Yes. <laughs> Thank God for the wonder that He made me. And I love my. And then you get the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. Sometimes you love the children, the grandchildren.
your will, and your word service, O oh God. And I pray that whatever is said today will be a blessing to someone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So the scripture reading that I'm going to um, highlight for you is, uh, it comes from Philippians. It's um, Philippians 1, 3 to 11, um, paying close attention to verse 6. And before I read it, I'm just going to tell you, um, I chose this because it's, it's a letter to the, the people of Philippi, and, and it speaks of love, friendship, partnership, and the things that we should look for in those relationships. And that'll tie in and you'll understand soon. I thank God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Six. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about you, about all of you, since I have you in my heart. For whether I am in chains or defending or and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of high righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. with the uh, theme of our church right now. I entitled this message, um, A Mother's Perspective, My Journey of Reflection and Reconnection Through Life's Relationships. So when we think about the word reconnect, we think about putting something back together to attach something that's been severed, uh, something that needs repair. But I also want to think about it like this, and I ask you to join with me today for the purpose of today in doing the same. It's, all, it's also in a reestablishment. So we need to reestablish things over time, whether that's relationships, whether that is uh, something. What, we go ahead and we always have to be continually practicing reestablishing or reconnecting. So I'm going to talk to you about relationships. Uh, we all, we are in relationship all day, every day. Every one of us. We have friendships, we have romantic relationships, we have relationships with our children, and we have other relationships, colleagues, so on and so forth. But each of these relationships require a degree of attention that continues to make that relationship be strong, to grow, and to stay connected. But what happens? Life, we get busy, and then with that, sometimes we feel like we're sort of drifting apart. And it, and it happens to the best of us, whether we realize it or not. Sometimes we finally get to a place where we're like, how did that happen? How did I even get here? Where did that distance come from? And why do I feel like this all of a sudden about that relationship? Take friendship, for instance. Those friendships are usually formed almost instantly but it's usually because of some type of connection. It's usually because you're drawn to the individual. Thank you. Thanks. So it's usually because we're, we're usually drawn to another person for whatever the reason, but that's a connection. It's an instant one that happens naturally. And so whether that happens when you're in kindergarten or whether it happens when you're in high school or college or as an adult in adulthood, it's still that natural something that happens. But then again, life gets in the way and we may find ourselves all of a sudden drifting apart. It may be because one friend has decided to follow a career path that keeps them fairly busy. It may be because the other friend has decided to focus more on family. And, and we all know, especially as mothers, family takes a lot of time, energy, and effort. 
And so you might just find yourselves at two different ends of the spectrum and you don't even necessarily mean for it to happen. And it doesn't mean that you no longer want to be friends. It doesn't mean that you no longer want to be in relationship. It simply means that you found yourself drifting apart because things happen. And so what do you do? Do you let that go? No. You just have to be purposeful about the way you come back and reconnect that relationship. You have to reestablish that in a way that may look different than it once did when you started. But it doesn't have to be something that's severed. It just needs some work. And so with that, I, I'm suggesting that you take the time to say, okay, maybe I need to be more deliberate about making a phone call and doing a check-in with my friend. Maybe I need to actually schedule in a coffee date with my friend. I don't know about you guys, I am not a talker on the phone, okay? Text me. And my famous thing is this. When somebody calls me, I'm texting you back saying, is this textable? Because I'm not, I don't like to be on the phone on to have a conversation. Anyway, call it wrong, I don't know. My father hated that. Anyway, um, my point being is that you have to be deliberate about finding ways to reconnect that and that it doesn't have to look the same when you do come back together in some way, shape, or form. It has to feel the same and that's it. It has to be feeling, uh, as long as your two hearts are together and you're both on that same page, that's what's important. What about relationships with family members? Well, families are difficult. <laughs> God love them. I love my family. And, and I'm happy to say that I usually don't have any verse with my family. I'm going to keep it real. But when we do have a falling out, it's cool. We say what we have to say, we say it with love, and we come back together. And I just pray that you all um, establish that same type of, of relationship with your family members, whoever they may be. Because we know that sometimes we, we feel slighted because somebody might have said something that hurt our feelings. You know, maybe we were offended, um, maybe we were rightfully offended, who knows? But it happens. But we have to just agree to disagree and keep it moving. Because that's what relationships are. They change, they evolve, and you just gotta keep it moving. So, I'm going to also speak about relationships with children. Because it's Mother's Day. <laughs> so we know that relationships with children, they take a lot of effort. From the time they're born, little, as little babies, to toddlers, to, you know, the elementary age stage. And then, oh God help us, the teenage years. <laughs> and then into adulthood. Because we know that parenting doesn't end. It just changes. That's right. <laughs> I've got grown children, I know. <laughs> so I think what we have to uh, remember and I want to focus on is that teenage phase. Because it is one of the most difficult phases of being in relationship with your children. They're looking to be more independent. They think they know it all. I do too. We as parents know that they don't know it all. <laughs> so, you know, there's always this tugging back and forth. And so we're, we're looking to stay in a way that's, uh, can stay connected in a way that's meaningful so that you don't go so far apart during that time that you're looking at coming back together and you're actually having to do that repair because it has been severed. We want to make sure that we're doing it in a way that's, you know, maybe it's just bent. Maybe it's just, you know, needs, it just needs some TLC. And so during those difficult times, we have to dig deep. We have to put our heels in real deep <laughs> and stay firm. But we also have to continue to be loving through all of their foolishness. <laughs> and, we, and we have to make sure that we're staying, finding ways, and it'll look different for every relationship, every child and, and parent relationship. We have to find ways that keep us connected. What's, what's interesting to that individual and me that we've always had that same, uh, you know, like for or whatever. And then remembering and holding on to that and finding little ways to incorporate that little and little as much as they're still trying to sort of push you away. But that's how it is with teenagers especially. They're, they're sort of doing this, go away, come here, go away, come here. 
and, and, and we just have to bear with that. So, in, in saying all of that, I, I'm saying that we have to be reflecting. We have to, as parents, as moms, we have to be reflecting on how is it that we can continue that reconnection, continue that reestablishment of that relationship. So, I'm also going to share, a, it's been personal, but now I'm really going to get personal. I'm going to start sharing some uh, experiences that have helped me, and hence the name of my uh, message about my journey, because it's my journey as, my, as a mother, but as an individual. And before I get into some mom-related examples, I want to give you one other example. One that you may, I would think, most of us would be able to relate to. Maybe not in the same way that I experienced it, but just the same. So, again, we're talking about disconnection and reconnection. This one is to do with my church and me personally. So, I want to talk a little bit about COVID-19. We all know how hard it has been we have, and that has caused a disconnection. That, that's been really difficult. Um, and it's been hard on everybody. We, we haven't been able to connect with each other the way we want to, physically, at least. We haven't been able to do that. And it was harder when we couldn't even come and gather together and worship in a service together. However, for me, it's kind of what I needed. I needed that physical space so that I could really reflect in what was happening for me in my relationship with my church. I needed to reflect and say, why am I feeling the things I'm feeling? Doesn't matter what caused them exactly. It's not an individual thing. It's what's going on. What is at the root of these feelings? And so, to do that, I had to look within me. Because I'm the only one that can do anything. Whether I say, see you later, I'm done. Whether, either way, it didn't change that I had a relationship with God. But I had to really think about my relationship with my church and my church family. Because listen, the church is the people. <laughs> the church is the people and that is us. And we, and I do, every single one of you, I consider you my church family. With all that, I had started to feel a disconnect. And in my reflection, I, I was able to, because of the pandemic not allowing us to come together, I was able to take that physical space, do that reflection piece, do the prayer piece, and still be able to focus on that without the guilt of not being physically in church. Because see, I was torn. I was torn between, do I go to church? Well, I don't want to just show up for, you know, just because to say I went to church. That's not why I come to church. So I, I needed to be able to have that space to do that in a way that was important to me. And I have to, well, clearly I'm here. Y'all stuck with me. Here. But there was an inner conflict, and my point being is that I had to take time to reflect. And yes. unfortunately, COVID-19 is really nasty, but the space helped me to overcome oh, okay. some of that. Yeah. So as I said, I am a mama five. The first one by way of my husband, the next three I birthed, and the fifth one by a blessing by way of my daughter, my grandson Xavier. I want to talk a little bit about, I call them my sets of children because see, <laughs> the older ones are older, they're in their 30s. And then I've got, you know, the teenage and, and the 10 year old. So there was a lot that happened in 11 years because there's 11 year difference between the child number three and child number four. Lots of growth that happened spiritually. I, I gained a lot, and there was there was. You're welcome, by the way, CJ and Xavier. Uh, <laughs> but really. 
think there was a lot that happened in the 11 years that had me um, parent differently between my two sets. So in the first set, I would say, I was a believer. But in the second set, I had developed my own personal relationship with God and knew Him for myself. And that is what impacted the, two, the differences in parenting. I recall as I was writing this out and thinking about all this, I was reminded of Sister Kim's uh, testimony when she talked about being a believer, but then knowing God for herself. Amen. Because it's absolutely, and I know that to be true because, as I just said, I, w I was that. I mean, growing up, I was taught to believe in God. Um, I had many conversations with my mom about what it meant to be in relationship with God, about her reasonings for the choices that she was making for us children as it pertained to us developing a relationship with God. And by the way, she just wanted it to be such an experience that it was personal for us and not an obligation or expectation of her or anyone else. And so, you know, again, it was always it was always present. There was never a doubt that I would believe in God. I thought though that that's all I needed to do at the time. <laughs> I thought that's all that, that's it. I know I believe in God and he knows I believe in him, so you know. But that's not the case. As a believer, my parenting style I would have described as more being uh, sorry, reactive. I reacted to situations. I reacted to the things that they said. I reacted to, you know, I was just reacting all over the place. I was just reacting. And what I did with one child, I did with the other because they were so close together in age. There was no real reflection happening about whether it was working, whether it wasn't working, was it good for them, was it good for me, was it, was it uh, helping us to grow in any way. I was just parenting day to day. One thing I do know is that during that time, it was difficult to see that I didn't, ha I didn't have to see eye to eye with those children. I didn't have to always understand it from their child perspective. Jeez, I was almost a child myself. I was young. <laughs> so I was going with them. I didn't, I didn't understand the significance of leaning on God. I would pray and say, oh, thank you, Jesus, for getting me through that hurdle. Get me over that hurdle, you know, or something like that. Again, reactive. But I didn't really take the time to go to God and trust that he would take me through the process the way I needed to be taken through the process. See, I was on the surface. And being on the surface is no good. We need to go deep. We need to go deep. And once I did that, because God tugged at me and wouldn't let go, and then I formed that relationship with God. He blessed me. He had always been blessed me. I just didn't know it. In my later years, and currently, I, the, I would describe my, my style as more of, I seek God. I, I look for that direction. I look for that way of being in a way with my children that is respectful that gives them what they need to grow while I'm giving them enough space to do it and to develop that own independence. I also do it in a way that I'm hopeful and I'm prayerful that they see my relationship that I have with God and that in my walking and in my talking, they see that too and they see the significance and hopefully one day they will have that for themselves. Because of him, I'm able to stay more on track and stay focused, but be okay when it doesn't go right. Because I just need to, again, go a little deeper, reflect a little more. And I know I talk about reflection like it's so easy. It's not. I mean, to be honest, it's a little easier for me now, or maybe a lot easier than it once was. But it is something that has to be practiced, if I'm being honest. You have to be deliberate about it. You can't do it for somebody else. It has to be for you. And then whatever you come out of that, learning about yourself, 
You will also gain knowledge in a situation. You will also gain knowledge about another person. Maybe you didn't realize that, you know, when you act a certain way, that makes them feel very sad or, or angry. You'll learn, but you should seek to learn for yourself and about yourself when you're doing that reflection, not about those other things. If you're doing it right, it just should just happen. From, it's my opinion. <laughs> The next thing I want to talk about is, again, a little bit more personal. So, you see, I'm going deeper and deeper. Because now I'm going to talk about the relationships. Again, I talked about the relationships with my, my personal relationship with children, but it was like sort of a vague something. But I also want to say this. We all, again, we're always in relationships. And so the first thing I had to do was develop that relationship with God. Once I did that, that made my relationship with my partner, now husband, better, stronger. And when it came to us parenting, we were definitely not on the same page. We did not always agree, and we won't always, but we, we didn't necessarily handle it well when we didn't agree. Here's the thing. Once I knew God for myself, and again reflected about me and what's happening to me, that trickled into everything else, including that partnership, because that's what it is, mm -hmm. that partnership with my spouse, which then in turn trickled into our parenting. And what a difference, because <laughs> when you're parenting as a team opposed to independently, woo. <laughs> so, and I'm a little bit off track, because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. I just need to find myself, sorry. Okay, so I was talking about, again, that um, I wanted to come back to that reestablishing. Uh, so we had to reestablish our relationship. I, we weren't separate, but we were, we were far apart. He's over here, I'm over here, and we really just needed to meet in the middle. And that was a reestablishing of, of that relationship, that partnership. And then what happened was that because we are now working as a team, our children are benefiting from that. So now those relationships with the children are repaired or bettered or improved, whatever way you want to look at it. And then once that happened, I had to look back and say, where was I, where am I now, and where do I want to be? I see where I was as a mom. I see where I am now as a mom. And I know exactly where I want to continue to go and be as a mom. But I first had to know Tammy. I first had to know Tammy as a person, as an individual, and allow those other relationships Form because I was doing the best I could do for myself with God and his guidance. Mm -hmm. Why am I telling you all of this? I really am trying to just connect the dots and forgive me if I haven't done that quite in the way that I intended. But really I want it to be a true example of how we just really need to be always reestablishing or reconnecting in all of the relationships we have in our day-to-day -day life. I want to talk about, and hopefully the point got across that, and again, because I'm a mother, how important it was, I couldn't just start as, how am I as a mother? It went so much deeper than that. I had to look at the most important relationship, which was God. That had to happen first. If that did not happen first, nothing else would have happened. Then I had to look at my, my uh, relationship with myself. Because if I'm not being true to myself, I can't be true in any other relationship I have. Thirdly, I had to take that and put that into my relationship with my spouse. Because that partnership, again, had to be stronger. That had to happen. Fourth, 
Because we reconnected as parents, and or sorry, as partners, we then were able to reconnect as parents. And that made us to be able to be a, a happier uh, parenting team. But more importantly for me, I had the advantage of being a better, healthier, happier mom. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. My point, as we go along in our days, it's important to de be deliberate about focusing on being well and staying well in relationship. So that we don't get to a point where we are disconnected completely, where we're severed. We don't want to be cut off. It's okay that things get a little strained, they get stretched, but always be reestablishing continuously. That reflection absolutely is important to that. Coming back together with yourself, coming back together with God, and then applying that to all of your relationships, and specifically your relationship with your children, and I as a mother. Thank you. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. 